So, first of all, I have to thank you, the organization, to give me the opportunity to give this talk today. It's a great pleasure for me. And, well, so we are trying today to uh, introduce some of the most accredited pathway that can improve longevity and uh, hopefully to give you some clues about the possibility to interact with this pathway in order to have a better aging. So, uh, um, there are several ways to uh, give a picture of the um, longevity trend uh, in a, a certain population. And um, if you look at the left uh, part of this slide, this is one of the, of the way the number of centenarians that are in a certain population. And this is a projection that has been done uh, uh, between the 2000 and 2050. And uh, as you can see, uh, well, it is well known, there is a, a huge improvement expected in terms of the longevity in the Western country. This has been done in the USA. This lady, she's Jean Calmon, is a famous centenarian. She, she was the um, oldest uh, human living person. Um, on the other side of the slide, this is the bad part uh, of the medal of the coin, the other side. Uh, this is another kind of projection. It's the number of the people that will get Alzheimer's disease in the same uh, space of time, the range of time. Uh, as in my background, I'm a neuroscientist, so I have decided to show uh, the trend of the Alzheimer's disease patients, but it's just an example to give you an idea of the general association between the augmentation of uh, longevity and the improvement that is completely overlapping uh, of the chronic disease associated with aging. And this is the brain of an Alzheimer's patient. So, uh, this picture, uh, not to my opinion, but to the, I mean, the opinion of m many people, not just scientists, but also at the governmental level, is a real emergency. Uh, in the last meeting of the Alzheimer's Association that was done one month ago in Washington, D.C., oh, well, the situation seems to be worse in terms of the Alzheimer's, at least, uh, because um, uh, in, uh, in China, I mean, the, I mean, the trend is, uh, seems to be really worse. To uh, give uh, uh, an answer to the, to the question of how can we interfere if from one side we have uh, a population that became older and older, at the same time, sicker and sicker. I mean, uh, this is not uh, a possible, um, um, I mean, uh, a possible uh, approach to the future, having uh, people old and sick. Uh, so, uh, from a research point of view, uh, to try to interact with aging in order to improve the possibility of getting a healthy aging, well, the first question is, uh, why do we age? And I have to say the answer <laughs> is not completely uh, understood. But just to give a general approach to the, to the, to the problem, to, to the big problem, uh, I've divided in these slides uh, upper part and lower part, uh, the two general hypotheses that can be summarized as a genetic hypothesis and stochastic hypothesis of aging means that uh, in our DNA somewhere there is some genes that in, are able as a sort of a timer to condition it, uh, our aging. Uh, in a different way, some genes or some cellular processes. This is the, the example, well-known example of telomerases. Or the possibility that just we are uh, affected by an accumulation of stress and damages due to an, an envir environmental situation. Uh, of course, uh, in the last four years, there was a, a huge acceleration of this first part due to the, um, I mean, the access to the Human Genome Project and the possibility to look at the DNA with an uh, easy and cheaper way, cheaper technologies. Um, I have to say that um, in terms of the possibility to find a real gerontogene, so some genes that are uh, able to uh, uh, condition our aging, there are few data at the moment. 
But anyway, the hypothesis is extremely suggestive. Just to think of the possibility. It's very well known there is a, a terrible pathology called the progeria. Well, a few months ago, they have understood that this due to a single mutation, I mean a single gene, laminin A, is able to accelerate in a terrible way the aging processes. Um, uh, about the stochastic um, theories, well, the free radicals hypothesis probably is one of the best known. I mean, you know, free radicals are a highly reactive molecule of oxygen molecule or nitrogen molecule that is part of our life. And in many organs, they have a, a very important meaning in terms of signaling molecules. But at the same time, they're extremely dangerous for many of the structure of the cells. First the membranes, then the proteins at the end, DNA. At the DNA level, they can act as a, an accelerator of mutation. I mean, they cause DNA mutation. Uh, uh, Inflammaging is another hypothesis that, uh, well, is strictly linked with the free radical uh, hypothesis. You know, the, the idea that our immune system is losing uh, day by day the ability to control cytokines production, and this uh, produces a sort of a chronic inflammation that accelerates the production of free radicals. So, uh, one of the most fascinating tentatives of the research in the last year was to unify the two approach, I mean, genetic and stochastic. And this is a very simple scheme that try to uh, visualize an idea that can link um, genetic theory and stochastic the accumulation of damage theory. And it's, in one way, it's quite easy. So the theory is, uh, well, we don't know if we have a timer inside our DNA, but we know that the activity of some genes are fundamental to maintain the homeostasis of the cell. So if this machinery is working worse, is losing the ability to be activated, there is an improvement of the damage due to free radicals production. And this is a sort of vicious loop because the free radicals, uh, uh, I mean, are, is, are able to um, downregulate and damage the DNA, DNA that should protect the, the cell. So, um, starting from this simple idea, many groups, included mine, when I was at the Rockefeller University, um, started a, a deep uh, search of the genes involved to the protection of the cells. So the genes that, uh, at the end, these groups decided to call Vita genes. It's a suggestive name that gives immediately the idea of genes that are fundamental to maintain life in the cells. And um, uh, I was extremely interested to a group of these genes called each shock proteins. But each shock proteins are just uh, uh, a small family am among the belonging to this idea of vital genes. Um, there is a very good friend of mine called Suresh Ratten that built on this uh, uh, approach a huge theory called hormetic theory. That means small stress is fundamental to life because stress, environmental stress, is the way to activate many of these vital genes. And this also explains, in some way, one of the paradox called preconditioning, very well known in the, in the biological labs. So if you give some small stress to the cells, you improve the ability of the cells to survive to a worst stress, so to many other damages. And at the end of many studies, and we have collaborated a little bit to, the, to this big drawing, well, I, I'm speaking uh, as a big family of researchers, but in one way we really collaborated, each one to the different pathway. We have built a, a sort of a possible mechanism that can be activated, that in a provocative way we call it programmed cell life, that in, is a sort of the opposite of programmed cell death, that is well known as a, as a, a molecular paradigm. So, moving from the cells, to the, uh, to the organisms, 